I'm Eileen Evans. I am an actress, model, and content creator, and I'm originally from New Hampshire. So I kind of always had a draw to New York even when I was growing up. I, I grew up dancing and that was like the main goal. But even when I decided that I eventually wanted to transition more into the acting and modeling side, New York was still just the place to be. There was something about it, the energy. And when I moved here, I was a little worried that it was going to like burst my bubble of the idea of what New York was, but when I got here, New York has lived up to everything that I always wanted it to be, which I'm very, very thankful for. There's just something about the energy. I will wake up, I try to wake up pretty early, I go to the gym, I then sit down and I'll answer so many emails. They will range anywhere from castings to people reaching out to me to actually book me. A lot of the time it's a lot of brand deals. There's so much back and forth with that. So I'll usually answer emails for a while. And then depending on the day, I will either be filming either content for my social media, self tapes, things like that. And then I will either be applying to castings, editing that material, or on days where I actually have gigs, you know, I'll have to get dressed, get ready, go into the city. Honestly, my day can look anywhere between I have nothing really planned to I have every single minute of the day planned out. I try to stick with my to-do lists, but I feel like I have to-do lists of to-do lists. I have to say that I feel like I'm pretty lucky that I grew up in the classical ballet world because that gave me such a thick skin from the very beginning because teachers can nitpick on the slightest thing and there is such high discipline that I got used to not taking things personally from a very young age because I find that I need to really make sure that I'm not taking anything personally. I mean, sometimes I don't even know why I'm not getting cast. Sometimes they will tell me, hey, you know, you were perfect. We just, it was down to you and one other person. We just, we happen to go with the other person, but we'd love to work with you in the future. And I try to specifically grasp onto that optimistic side of, wow, they really liked me. They really want to work with me. Instead of focusing on the, I didn't get it. Like I, di I didn't get the job. What am I supposed, you, know, you know, it's so easy to slip into that negative state. I really actively try to always find that positive and that honestly compliment that you can find out of those interactions. I feel like I am constantly battling two voices inside my head. One is like, you are amazing. You're so talented. You got this. You're gonna go far. Like you have so much potential. And then the other voice is going, who do you think you are? <laughs> like, who do you think you are to be trying to accomplish these incredible things? Like there are so many other people out there who are way more talented than you. So I have to really try to keep that in check. Sometimes when that self doubt is, a little louder than I would like. I try to ask myself, okay, do I need to sleep? Do I need to eat? Do I need to take a shower? <laughs> Usually it's those things. It's like, okay, you know, maybe I need to like take a little moment for myself. I can also meditate. I feel like meditating really centers me and gives me a better perspective on the whole thing because it's so easy for me to get tunnel vision feels like sometimes I will get tunnel vision where I'm just focused on this next goal and I feel like I'm behind because I haven't reached that goal. But then as soon as I reach that goal, I'm focused on the next one because I was already behind. And so now I haven't even given myself time to appreciate the fact that I hit that goal because I'm too focused on the fact that I feel like I'm behind. And so sometimes you need, I need to take those blinders off and take a step back and look and go, hey, you know, I've actually done a lot. And I'm just so focused on continuing moving forward that I don't even see the fact that I've made it so far. I'd have to say, I think my biggest obstacle that I've had to get over and I'm still getting over is self-doubt. Specifically, imposter syndrome, which is a very specific flavor of self-doubt. And it's something that I know everyone deals with. I talk to my friends about it all the time. We're all constantly struggling with it because Especially being in New York, you're constantly surrounded by incredible talent all over the place. And so you look at it and you go, well, who am I to be amongst these people to try to be doing what they're doing? Look at them, they're so talented. How could I possibly measure up to that? And you feel like you're an absolute imposter. And 
The truth is that that's a lie. And I even know that deep down, but it's so difficult to move past that. And I constantly have to remind myself to get out of my own way. If I get out of my own way, great things can happen. And sometimes there have been a few elements in my life that I've just realized I'm in my own way. If I just push all of that self-doubt, that imposter syndrome to the side, this will play out and it'll prove to me that I'm not an imposter. And every time I've actually managed to do that, I have proved to myself, I can do this. I absolutely belong here. It's just identifying when you're doubting yourself. All of those celebrities, huge talents that you look up to and that we idolize are just other human beings. And you are also a human being. So the difference between you and that massive celebrity might feel huge, but it's not as huge as we think. Like if you were just sitting in a room with your idol and talking with them, you would see like, oh, they're just another human being. They're just another person. You are a person. Anything that they do, you can do. There's work ethic, there's talent, but if you hone those, you have all the same tools as they do. There's this element that I, I've started realizing, honestly, through like watching documentaries of these famous people that I look up to, and you see these behind the scenes, and you're like, they're, they're just like me. They're just like me. I can do that. And that's honestly helped with the self-doubt, is to see just how relatively normal celebrities really can be. We put them on pedestals, but I really don't think that's needed or necessary. Social media is definitely a double-edged sword, but I sit on the side of it is one of the greatest tools for creators, for artists, anyone who wants to make something, honestly, anyone. It is the best tool anyone can be using because it gives me the power to be creating content, to be showing my talent, to get in front of people without having to get past the gatekeepers first. Because if you, if I think back to, you know, what the industry looked like before the internet even existed, if I wanted to get a gig, I would have to get an agent to sign off on me. I'd have to get that agent to then find people who would be interested in working with me, get the casting director to okay me, to even just get my first job to even get in front of people's eyes in the first place. With social media, I can get past all of that. And through that, I have created an entire career based off of being a freelancer. I have worked with some agents. I've been able to book some incredible, incredible gigs because of my use of social media, because people are then able to find me to book me for projects because of my online presence. And I think every single actor can be taking advantage of that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I enjoy it. I enjoy the content creation side. It means that I can get creative. I kind of have the, my own control. And then again, it gets me out in front of people where I can then work on other projects. For example, I am gonna be starting a big budget web series where I'm a main reoccurring character and they found me because they found me on the internet first. So the other side of the sword here with uh, social media is that one, it is always hungry. <laughs> you need to be constantly creating content, constantly, in order to like feed that machine that is just churning out content, which can be very draining. The other side of it, you get lots of hate on the internet. I have received lots of hate comments, so many inappropriate messages from strange men. It can be very uncomfortable, but similar to the uh, taking rejection side, I just have a thick skin and I just don't let it affect me personally. If someone says something negative to me, uh, especially on TikTok, because that's where a majority of the hate comes to be completely honest, but if anyone ever says anything negative to me, I take it as, wow, I actually kind of feel bad for you because your life exists of putting out hate onto other people that you don't know on social media. Like what must be going on in your life to find you in this position? That's sad to me. A year ago, over a year ago now, I started calling out men who said in incredibly inappropriate things to me 
in my DMs, and I start calling them out publicly. And the point behind it is one, to make a little bit of some comedy out of it. One, to take the narrative back, and also to create this dialogue about this. Be like, hey, this isn't okay, and this is why it's not okay. Let's have a discussion about it. And I have, through sharing that, had so many people come forward and be like, wow, you deal with this constantly. This is crazy. I had no idea. And I'm like, this is not just me. This is any woman who exists in the internet. If you knew of somebody who wanted to come here and do the acting thing, like, what would you tell them? Can I swear? Am I allowed to yeah, swear? Right. <laughs> I would tell them to fucking do it. Go for it. Whatever your biggest dreams are, reach for them and go for them. Do not heed any sort of criticism you're getting even from your family, from your friends. Just because they don't dream as big as you do, that doesn't mean you can't dream big. Go for it because you only have one life. So it's right now that you're going to either reach for this opportunity or not. And later on in life, I certainly never want to sit back and go, you know, I wish I had reached for those big dreams that I have because now I'm sitting here wishing that I had accomplished them, but I just never did it. And it's never too late to start is the other thing, but if you wanna do it now, do it because of what is holding you back. Be cringe. As <laughs> I've heard some people say that. If, you, if other people are cringing at your ambition, let them cringe. Thank <laughs> you.